Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Mech Merlin stream. Let's see who's here tonight. I see a Barugi, a Nismo, Quarter Cliff, Big Walruses, and Bookmonger, and a Kawaii Voldemort as well. Thanks, guys, for joining in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As you can see from the stream title, we are unboxing another board today. It is a 660 layout by the name of the Delta Blade. But yeah, let me paste that in chat. You guys can follow along while I pour myself a nice glass of wine. Yeah, here we go, here we go. Let's go take a look at this link that I sent. Um, Delta Blade, this is what it looks like. All right, it is a, it is a keyboard inspired by the FC660. As you can see, the arrow keys are scrunched up next to the rest of the keyboard and with a, a partial rightmost column to the very right. This is very popularized by the FC660M made by Leopold. Oog talks says, didn't see the link. Here we go. Let's put that link again as well. And you can also see it if you execute the build command right there. Yeah, this is a board that is going into group buy on May 3rd. It is a top mount 660 layout, seven degree board angle, QMK and VIA support, MX and PCB mount stabs, Uses an ARM microcontroller, all aluminum construction, designed in collaboration with Emil, IO3, and One Creative Mind. But yeah, this is a blind assassin board, as you can see. Blind assassin board. This is a board meant to go on sale for 480 bucks. Uh, group buy starts on May 3rd and is ending May 31st. MOQ of 80. Expected delivery of Q1 2022. Knock on wood, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. So yeah, this group buy will be on Victus Design. So you guys can click on that through the Geek Hack page. And these are the supported layouts. Um, let's see, it's got the usual one. And then it's got the symmetrical one right here. Well, I guess that's not, not really symmetrical. That's just the 7U with the 1.5U and the one to the very right. No blocker. Yeah, the, the 660 layout is traditionally a non-blocker layout. The blocker is on the right, in the very right here, separating out the the um, arrow keys. Um, if you remember the Think 6.5 V2, the 2U was kind of similar to this. Let's see, it's logo for proof says 480 is not as bad as some of his other stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. That's very true. So here, let's go look at some prototype photos before I unbox the actual unit. Look at that. Delta Blade. So as many of you know, I am a big 660 fan. I have pretty much owned almost every 660 board in the community. There's only one that I haven't owned. It was the... I can't even remember. It was a hot sauce board that was all um, acrylic. It was called, oh, it was called the Womier, the Womier. That's a 660 layout board. That That's the only one that I haven't owned. The only ones that I currently st still own are the Clue boards and my Volcano 660. <laughs> well, check this out, check this out. Looks like a, a very good board. I don't actually know what color I'm getting, so I guess we'll find out soon. I guess we'll find out soon. Here goes. Hopefully you guys are noticing the, the new dust mat that I'm trying out. Another Merlin branded mask. I mean dust mat. You can see the wizard hat over here. Very prominently displayed. <laughs> yeah, here we go. So, um, lately, if you've been watching my most current streams, you'll know that I've been unboxing some very nice keyboards. And honestly, first impressions, as soon as you opened it up, I was like, oh man. There's no nice fancy box. It's just a cardboard box with, with foam in it. Aw oh, man. So hopefully the prototype units will have something fancier, you know. Not that the quality of packaging is any indication of the quality of the board, you know, but it's just it's, a, it's just like a nice, nice little touch. Yeah, here we go. This is This is the keyboard right here. This is the PCB. Delta Blade. Designed by Blind Assassin. And the solder mask right there. USB-C is on the daughter board itself. I mean, sorry, it's on the PCB itself. Um, 
Looks like there is an overcurrent protection, I believe. I see a fuse. I can't, I can't remember if the fuse is for over voltage or for overcurrent. I always forget. Um, that, that might be an ESD chip. It's not really mentioned too much over here. Let me, let me search his Geek Hack page. Nope, nothing mentioned here. Yep. Ugtok has spent all money on machining for board, no funds for packaging. Yeah, that's true. Reset button over here as well. So lately, I, I've been discovering that um, I, I greatly prefer having a reset button, not on the back of the board, but on the front over here. Simply because, you know, like a lot of people are like, oh, it's too, it's too much effort to open up the board. I don't want to have to take out all the screws and press the button in case my firmware is completely messed up. Whereas I've seen designs where the reset button is right here. So all you have to do is pop off your space bar and press the reset button there. Hey, it looks like Blind Assassin is here. He says, everything I do has ESD. Perfect. Good to know. Good to know. So yeah, there we go. From a quick eyeballing, it looks like it's a pretty high quality PCB. Let's see. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right. Let's take a look at the rest of the board, shall we? Here, let's see how this looks. Mex on deck, rating with a party of 45. Dude, thank you. Long time no see. Long time no see, man. But yeah, thanks guys for joining in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mex on deck, for sending all your people my way. In case it's your first time here, um, my name is Merlin and I do keyboards. For example, tonight we are unboxing. We are unboxing the Delta Blade, the, the, the soon to go in group buy Delta Blade. I believe it's starting May 3rd and going all the way till the 31st. Check it out, silver and black. Very pretty. Very pretty. So yeah, we're at the very beginning of the unboxing. Pretty much just pulled out the board right there. Um, this is the first time that I'm ever unboxing it. I try to, you know, despite having it for the last week or so, I've been trying my best not to open it so, so that everything you see tonight will be my genuine reactions and first initial impressions. But yeah, it's like, honestly, initial reactions right now is it looks real good. Look at that, I like how it's machined. I like how it's shaped. This is probably one of the, one of the prettier 660s I have seen in, in this hobby. Is that a double bezel? Yes, it is. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous, guys? Dang. Look at that beautiful, can't be cheap. Yeah, it's about, if you look on the Geek Hack page, it is supposed to go on sale for, what's the price, $480. And extra PCBs and extra plates, as well as carbon fiber plates will be available. $480 for this guy right here very pretty yeah let's go take it apart let's see let's see how how it looks inside let's see how it looks inside let's see all right let's see what what screws do I need? 480, yeah, 480 indeed. Expensive board, but so far from the looks of it, I think it's worth it. Of course, I'm not building this tonight quite yet. I will be building this this coming Thursday. So Thursday, Thursday evening, we'll have my full initial impressions, I guess. Tonight's just unboxing impressions. Figuring out what's what's inside, how it all comes together and all that good stuff. Is the bottom and weight all aluminum? Yes, they are all aluminum. Here we go, different screws I see. Longer screws for the back of the board and shorter screws for the lip. 
INF Phoenix gifted a tier one sub, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much. And literal deli bird subscribed with Prime. Thank you. <laughs> Here you go, my fellow Phoenix. Oh my gosh. It's a Phoenix rising. <laughs> Phoenix uprising. All right. Let's pop it up. There it goes. All right, and yes, you guys remember this is a top mount board. As you can see, it's a top mount board, aluminum plate mounts to the top. And yes, there'll be extra plates as well as carbon fiber plates available. Here we go, that's the aluminum weight right there. Oh yeah, this is really well made. I like it a lot. Here, and oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you, Blind Assassin, that I only need to use one screw to take apart all this. Let's see, is that the same for the plate? We'll see, we'll see. Let's see, does that weight come off? Yep, weight comes off, just like that. Yeah, that is an aluminum pl an aluminum weight right there. Um, Blind Assassin, is there any option for a brass one? Or is this strictly just a accent piece right now? Yeah, that is strictly just an accent piece. Let's see. Let me search for brass here. Brass. Um, no mention of brass. It was talked about, but I'm one person and already have too many options to handle. There we go. So, there we go. No brass weight. Just aluminum accent piece. Yeah, like, this is a very light board, if you ask me. This is a very light-feeling board. Which is not a bad thing, you know? I like light boards. Right, I'm just gonna put this in for now. I'm gonna take a look at the top piece. But yeah, if any of you guys have questions about the board or want to see a certain angle or show a certain component, make sure you tag me so that I actually see your question. And here we go, let's go look at that plate. And yes, we will need to change drivers here. Emil, subscribe to tier one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh -oh. There we go. Okay, I'm thankful that you only need two screws to put this board together. Oog talks says, I really just want good shots at the back design where the bottom and top meet with that V. That V. What do you mean that V? Well, I guess I can just put it back on top later. Nismo says, did you like the Neo Keys carbon fire? Oh, oh, okay. I meant tagging me in terms of questions for this board, not for questions regarding other boards. <laughs> But yeah, for the Neo Keys carbon fiber board, yes, I did like it. All right, got all of them off, perfect. Here you go, that's your plate, guys. Black plate. Right there. And lately I've been noticing that plates have been too tight on some of the boards that I've tried. So these days I like to test out switches, you know, just to make sure. There we go. Will this fit a standard Gateron Black just fine? Yep, yes it will. Did not even have to struggle on that one. That's good. There we go. Worked out pretty good. Worked out pretty good, I say. Let's see, what else can I put in here? Do I have another switch that's just hanging out? 
Mm, oh yeah, here we go. I have a NK Dry. I have an NK Dry. Yeah, that one went in just fine as well. Excellent, that's good. Yeah, okay, so I've seen several 660s come into existence. And honestly, I'd say none of them look as nice as this. So yeah, thanks Emil, Emil for your design. <laughs> This is really pretty. How old is Mr. Merlin? I'm turning 670 come August. All right, let's go put this in. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a very good build experience for me. Everything seems fine. Um, I did not see any plate foam in it at all. Um, Blind Assassin, do you recommend plate foam for this board? Any kind of plate foam, any kind of case foam, is that recommended for to, to have this board meet its full potential? Alex Keeps says, I missed your 669th birthday stream. <laughs> Or if Emil knows, I guess. <laughs> I still say that is preference. I typically build with foam just because I like the muted sound. Ah, okay. All right. All right. Oh yeah, this, this seems to be a board that's very easily assembled. There. Four eighty is so much for me. I thought the Icky sixty eight was expensive. Yeah, the price is definitely not for um, everyone. You know. Now keep in mind, the Icky sixty eight and this are in a completely different category. Did it come with a PCB? Yes, it did. Came with a ESD protected, overcurrent protected PCB. So yeah, here's the side profile right here. Here's the back right there. Yeah, I think this is so classy right here, having the delta symbol. That's so pretty. There we go, that's the front lip right there. I'll put a mirror on my desk due to this board. <laughs> Wait, this board is 480? Yes, this board is $480. Right here. Guess I'm gonna have to sell my kidney. Yeah. yeah I've sold multiple kidneys over the last couple of years. <laughs> Well, here, this is the problem with the 660s, right? Here, let me pull out that layout diagram. Look at this, right? Um, historically speaking, the FC660M from Leopold, even though it used a 6.25U spacebar, the stems were not um, were, were not the same as regular Cherry, Cherry MX keycaps. So what happened was people who bought this board couldn't buy GMK. So over time, people just stopped focusing on that. But now, if you look at these three layouts here, you've got 6.25U with the win key as a 1U. And then on the very right here, you have Alt, Win, and Control, all 1.25. It's, it's not symmetrical. People like symmetry. And a lot of people seem to like the blocker when it comes to 65%. And this board does not have, have a blocker separating out the arrow keys. Um, my argument for that though, is this, right? Because there's no column right here, the right side of the board effectively functions as your blocker. 
and for some reason that just works better for me than actually having a blocker over here. These top two keys right here, over here, these are usually your page down, page up and page down. But if you go to a meetup, you'll see lots of people just put like artisan keys there. Right? King Fighter says, I really dislike the 65 layout. This is much better than that to me because it doesn't ruin my split backspace typing. That's true. That's true. I, I agree with you. Because if it's a split backspace and your rightmost column is glued to it, then there's a chance that you hit this key instead. But with the 660 with this huge blocker there, it just prevents you from doing so. That's a good point. And that's a good point. Yeah, this is a, this is a seven degree typing angle board, which falls right in the sweet spot for me. Phoenix says, I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but for me, Artisan kind of ruins a build. I agree with you. That's why you, you never see Artisans on this channel. Mainly because I don't have any, mainly because I was never really interested in them. <laughs> so yeah. That's it. Yeah, by the way, this is an ARM microcontroller right here. I'm glad to see lots of keyboard designers shifting over to the ARM architecture versus the AVR architecture. This looks to be an STM32 F... F something. Wait, it should be on the group by page. Here we go. STM32 F072 CBT6. I believe this is the same microcontroller that's used by Clueboard. But yeah, for sure. Should absolutely work with VIA and QMK and any future updates. As some of you know, I tried to get Vile working, but I just couldn't open the Vile app on my desktop for some odd reason. <laughs> Literal Delibird says, are you Twitch affiliate yet? Um, no, I'm not. Though they did say to reapply in three weeks and it's been more than three weeks. So yeah, sure, I can try again. I can try again. Let's see, Blind Assassin has used it since the TKC candy bar. Awesome. Good to know. But yeah, look at that. It's also got in-switch LEDs, not RGB though. So for those of you hoping for, for RGB goodness, too bad, too bad. Quick question, um, Blind Assassin, are these in-switch LEDs individually addressable? Or are they all just a chain, like how they, how they usually are? Not addressable, okay. Okay. All right, so this is probably the first custom 660 this is from Clueboard. Um, Clueboard is run by one of the QMK directors, Scully Days. But here we go. This is the first, one of the first custom 660s you were ever able to get. It's got an acrylic bottom right here. Hot swap. Arm microcontroller. It's got a, it's got a speaker in it as well. Um, what else? RGB underglow. Um, high profile. All that good stuff. Let's see. Check this out. Check this out. It looks pretty good up front, but in no way does it look like this. This looks amazing. Like obviously, one of the major um, drawbacks to this was people complained that the gap between the keycaps and the side right here was too large. Not sure if you guys can see that, but you guys can see that gap, right? Going along the side, filling out that outline. That is definitely one thing I will be concerned about when I build this, but I can't tell as it is right now, right? And if you look at this, this looks like a fairly boring board, right? Well, it was really good during its time, but now, you, but now you've got something like this. This thing, look at that. This is a lot more aesthetically pleasing. 
This is probably the board that I would be comparing this to. Just because I personally, personally think that this board... This is the best sounding 660 currently in the market. This is the Volcano 660 run by Ilum KB back in 2017 or so. Yeah, this is a gasket mounted board. As you can see, bezel, having thick bezels is its main feature right here. Not the most aesthetically pleasing board, but it does sound hella nice and it feels hella nice too. So yeah, this is probably what I will be comparing the Delta Blade to. Right? Like, just looking at it right now, um, I believe this was an 8 degree typing angle, so I know that typing on the Delta Blade will already feel better to me. But in terms of how it feels, like how the top mount will feel, that will remain to be seen. Alright, if there aren't any more questions, I think we're good for, for, for the stream. Um, I'll be building this on Thursday, um, so you guys can hear my final... My final, final opinions, I guess. <laughs> like, looking at the Geek Hack page, I already knew that I liked how it looked. But just seeing it in person, seeing it in person, I'm just, like, blown away by all of the edges right here and the chamfer design. Um, yeah, this is probably, I'd say, just because just I know what all of, all of the other 660s look like. I'm going to say this is probably the best looking one out of all of them. Yeah, this is the best looking 660 out of all the 660s in, in our community. The only issue that I have really is this. I really would have preferred just that delta symbol, kind of like how it how how it is on the back here. Like I I'm not a fan of the lettering, the delta blade. Like maybe if it was just the triangle right there and then delta blade in in, in like small print over on the side, then yeah. But having it like this kind of, kind of off-putting to me. Yeah, if you guys are interested in this board, this board goes on group buy on May 3rd and will go until the 31st. Oh wait, it's not even plugged in. I'm not even copy pasting properly. But yeah, make sure you check out this board by then. It is a $480 board. So save up, save up, save up. I know it's quite expensive. But just on my initial reactions, I believe it's really worth it. So check it out. Check it out, guys. Um, tune in this coming Thursday and we'll be building this guy. It will be a much longer stream, but I'll have most things prepped before then. Here we go. Give you guys one last look. There's the front. There's the sides. There's the back. I mean, that's the bottom. I mean, here's the back. And there's the lip right there. And last but not the least, show off the PCB again. All right, I'll see you guys this coming Thursday, 7.30 p.m. PDT. We'll be building this board with either Tangerines or KS3s, haven't quite decided, and we'll be topping them off with GMK Olivia. Tune in then to find out my full thoughts and opinions. All right, guys, I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.